All right. So as always, Tree just loves me to get naked <laughs> in his gym. Good. Can you turn to the side? Yes. Good. Side again. Oh, back, sorry. Good. So the love handle area is starting to come in too. Can you show me your legs? Just reef your legs up. <clears throat> Can you just give them a bit of a flex? So squeeze them out like this. So think of trying to pop your, so here, that's straight on. Think of trying to pop your hips. Yeah, like that. Good, good. <clears throat> good. Yeah, your midsection is coming in a fair bit. All right, cool. Good, good, good. Sweet. All right, so legs today. Fuck. I was going to go shopping after this and I've left my wallet and my phone at home. <laughs> and we have to remember not to say like as much. <laughs> How are you feeling today? Okay? Yeah, better. better. Yeah, just, just tired. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just easy to cut it out because, like, putting the bar on the thing, like, makes a lot of noise and get a lot more weight. Increase the weight. All right, so warm up. What do you want on now? Jump to 100. 100? Yeah. So that's another... 15s. We take the fives off. Okay, so we got 115 for eight last week. Can we get 115 for nine this week, please? For three, three sets. So what's that? That's 100. 100, 115 is another. Good. open. Nice, good. Is that too low or is that all right? It's too low, just guide me in. Yeah. Right. Just like push it. And then you'll drop it? Yeah. Can I borrow this stuff next Thursday? Yeah, it's in my calendar. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, right. yeah interviewing Paul. Paul, yeah. yeah. So I got Paul and then the next one is I'll probably get all the um, um, maybe the defense one so we'll organize that with you as well and see whatever um, uh -huh. and then I'll probably get the women uh -huh. we'll do like a round table type thing how many people uh, maybe two or three but I'm just trying to figure out a way to make it so I'm thinking about the consumer the, they're not just gonna they don't know me I'm just another you know what I mean like what can make them actually want to come and listen so I'm just trying to think of how to make it conversational but also adding value and, and maybe instructing or just helping a different way of thinking because that's where that's the angle I'm going to come from is looking at health and fitness from a different angle rather than it being a chore or something you do for an external reward more so for you like mm -hmm. training to keep you optimal training to make sure you're performing in other areas training to ensure your mindset's still good so wrap it up that way rather than you're gonna get bigger muscles yeah <clears throat> one good hips open two three good Four, five, 
hips open. Up, oh, ten, beautiful. That's ten. Yep. I'm gonna do a nine. We were, but you got an extra one in there. <laughs> I wasn't counting. All right, so take the full break for me. Um, it'll be a minute and a half. That's what I said to my parents. I called them up two days ago, mm -hmm. and my dad, he's 60 something, mm -hmm. but he's done his back again from work. So he's a plumber by trade, became a builder, and now he manages. Are they Brisbane or out of New South Wales? Right, yeah. yeah. And, uh, he still crawls under things and still in dishwashers and works for like aged care. Mm. And uh, he had all these physio exercises and was doing walking and stuff, but it like dropped off a little bit and then injured himself and he keeps, that's a pretty consistent cycle. Mm -hmm. And I said, you need to stop doing that. And just, cause they both, him and my mum both don't continue their training mm. and they yeah get sick or get injured and I said to them you need to start taking care of yourself mm. like it'll get harder and harder the longer you don't do it now mm -hmm. and it just has to be like fitness isn't I keep saying like still but fitness isn't a you need to get big muscles but it needs to be a habit mm. because it's part of your life like that all those basic skills that we were talking about, like can you still squat at 50? One, good. Hips over, two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Last one. Nice, good. Oh. All right. I don't know if your parents are like this, but this reminds me of my parents, my dad especially, antibiotics. You know, you have to take the whole course. He's notorious for taking it, and when it's done, he's like, oh, I'm done. <laughs> so it's almost like they have this, I don't know if it's a priorities thing where I guess in their days these things. Is there only three things? Um, yeah. Oh no, there is four, sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I've been thinking about, because I get to talk to all different age groups and I kind of pick up, I don't know if it's trends or whatnot with particular age groups and 50 plus, it's really hard to break the, the old mindset, but then it's almost like a values hierarchy that health and fitness is very low on that hierarchy. So then it's hard to break it and say, hey, look, this is something you need to do to maintain your health. It's something you need to do to maintain your well-being, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't know if it's a thinking that's just so ingrained that you have to try and break or, or what, but yeah. I think it's also a cultural thing, right? Mm. Like you look at most East, Eastern cultures the elderly are very active mm. and still are like can do pull-ups can do full squats can they'll go out and do like we walk around the lake mm. how many old yeah. asian people were at that park in the morning doing, doing tai chi and yeah <laughs> tai chi or like stretching exercises or hang from the bars and do leg raises mm. and you're like how old are you like <laughs> fuck like you do some of this better than i can i've seen old guys there was like three of them they all had gloves on and they're on the parallel bars doing full dips. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Three of them. And they, like, they weren't super old. I would have put them in like late forties, early fifties maybe. Mm. And they weren't the pinnacle of fitness or anything. But they were still but you could tell, you could tell they were solid dudes. Hmm. And I was like, nice. Respect. Good job. <laughs> still out here, 6 a.m. in the morning. Hips open. 
You had the inflection on that, like I was doing more. Hey? <laughs> You're like nine, and I was like, am I doing more? Ah, but see, in communication, see how tonality changes the, the perception of the word. Well, I'm actually, I mean, every language has that, right? The yeah. inflection of the question changes. So that's something I'm trying to work on is more the vocal ranges to try and end like, like that, to be able to animate myself mm. a bit more. Uh, okay, so we've got... Leg extension and curls? No, we have leg curls and then leg press. Oh, no, no, dumbbell stiff leg deadlifts first, yeah. and then we've got uh, leg press, sorry. And I'm, I'm gonna build out a new program for you this weekend as well. Okay, for the remaining. Yep. So last week we got eight reps for 37.5. So let's try to get... That's that short that I made where I can't count and <laughs> pull the wrong, the wrong dumbbell off. So let's do one warm up and then we're getting... Oh, you want you, chalk? No, straps. straps. You can grab the straps for me. I'll do the warm up. Good. Try to have a more, less of a bend. Bend where? In your knees, sorry. Ah. Oh. There. Good. Oh, you should come over here because I want you in this while we talk about this topic, but. I won't mention details mm -hmm. for the people listening at home, but talk about in general the. So, for context, I had a really shit end of my weekend, and it, uh, I ended up going out for dinner, and it went like a thousand calories over my 1600 calories that I'm allowed, and just had a couple of drinks. Like, most of the. Over half the calories that I went over was from just having some drinks. Do you have 37.5s? No, no 40s. You jumped straight to 42 and a half. Well, the, the bloke I bought it off jumped straight. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, and then you go 50s. Yeah. So I'm missing You're 40s. Just, you essentially, you help people build up and then you're just like, fuck you guys. Yeah. <laughs> the go bigger. heavy. <laughs> so, yeah, so I'm missing a 40 and a 45. Yeah. And a 47.5. Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah, so I essentially went over the calories, had a shit day. That was the only thing that slipped. So the training this week's been going well. Steps and cardio. And then talking to Tree about it yesterday. Um, and I guess we spoke about. just like life gets in the way mm -hmm. and, and how you approach that. Mm. And then you also spoke about old tree versus new tree as a trainer mm -hmm. and how you approach that. So yeah, I just thought it'd be good to talk about it now in like the approach that people can take and understanding that, like from my perspective, I'm trying to reach a goal and I was really upset with myself, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. then I kept yeah. the strictness around everything else because mm -hmm. I had that one night where I mm -hmm. slipped up. So um, I think it's like a, a really fine line between discipline and then discipline-itis where you're like, I have to get this done, I have to get this done. That's good, but then for a longevity perspective, I, yep. I, I don't think it is. So I, I said this to you yesterday, there's always ideal and then there's real. So yep. I, in my mind as a coach, I always have two plans for people, an ideal plan and then a real plan for, say, what happened with you where you came yep. in and just explained to me and... The difference between old tree, old coach tree was, I was like that drill sergeant. I don't give a fuck that your life is like this, you're doing this, you're doing that. That's cool, but then 
that also creates an environment for burnout or disliking what you're doing. Yeah. So in my mind, even though we've got a specific goal date that we're working towards, I don't want to create bad habits or old, bad thought patterns for you going forward. Because I want you to be able to do this forever, you know, and life happens forever. Yeah. No, was it eight? Eight. Yeah, eight. nine, sorry, but we'll nine. go nine the next one. No, no, okay. do nine. Good. Yeah, I think, yeah, that was the other thing as well is, I don't see the, but the photo shoot's good because it gets me mm. to a state and then we've already discussed about next stages. So mm -hmm. that was really helpful. Mm. Yeah, building, I was thinking after the fact, a good overall topic, either as a panel or stuff that you want to put out mm. is habits mm -hmm. and how you build those, like how long it takes to build yeah, yeah, yeah. Have it, which is something like 21 days or something. Mm -hmm. But to break one is seven. But it doesn't mean if you have one day off. Mm -hmm. So that's why I said to you yesterday, when these times happen, give yourself a break. Yeah. But then this is where you need to be both coach and client for yourself. Yeah. Is to go, look, I'm allowing myself, I'm human. I'm allowing myself to yeah. go through these emotions, etc., etc. But when Monday comes around, yeah. I'm back on the horse. Because like you're saying, that this week could very easily turn into two weeks and then once it's yeah. at two weeks four weeks is extremely easy and then once you hit four weeks yeah. it's done do you know yeah. what i mean so i me think for me like i see it as three days mm -hmm. is my break yep breaking habit so, so now that's this is your formula yeah mm -hmm. so because if i had say i had that night and then the next night i did the same thing i could recover mm -hmm. but if i do it three nights in a row from mm -hmm. for me that's without intervention, mm -hmm. then I break into it, into, into those old habits, mm -hmm. where I'll just do that again and again. Now, having you to be accountable for as an external, automatically kind of breaks that, because mm -hmm. we have the comms, and if I did it two nights in a row, I would have been messaging you rather than waiting for my session, yeah. whereas it happened, and I was like, I've got a session with Trey on Wednesday, I'll you just talk to him it. then, and yeah. the rest, like, I felt really guilty, but then Monday and Tuesday were fine. Mm -hmm. So it happened, I can't do anything about it. And then got in Wednesday and mm -hmm. we talked about it. But I didn't want to come in and be like, I've been eating fucking double quarter pounders for the last <laughs> four days because I'm sad. But see, on a more serious note is there's the physical effects, which is not really that, like four days of a thousand calories over isn't going to break you. Yeah. But the mindset it puts you in yeah. is not good because you're going to start feeling guilty yeah. and it's almost like this and you associate the training with that right correct yeah. so then you start like punishing yourself going oh i gotta go and not eat the whole day next tomorrow and i'm yeah. gonna run twenty five thousand kilometers and then yeah. i'm gonna do five sessions that's that's not a good mindset to be in either yeah because then that puts you in like a fatigue deficit correct but then you, you're associating this with good and bad yeah you know, i've been naughty so i need to punish myself yeah well, yeah yeah no it's life life happens i almost feel the next progress or evolution for you from a mindset perspective is to go is to remove that guilt yeah two three Try not to bounce at the bottom. Seven. <sighs> eight. One more. No, good. Yeah, so the next start, start, the next evolution for you or the next progression point for you is to be able to go, look, I'm going through some shit right now. I'm feeling a certain way. I'm allowing myself to do this. I'm not going to feel guilty, but when Monday rolls around, I'm back on. Yeah. Because yeah. that guilt, I've been there so, when I was competing, now that I look back, my mental state was fucked. You know, like I would have, if I went off my diet, and it's not even bad food, if I went over by like two or three grams on my rice thing, I'd be like, fuck, I fucked up, oh shit, blah, blah, blah. But then, that would put me in the state where like, oh, I fucked up now, what's the point? Yeah. And keep going, I might as well go and eat. I'll go and do that, I'll go and do yeah. that. Whereas if you just went, look, it's happened, I move on. Yeah. There's not, there hasn't, there isn't that extreme polarity of yeah. like, I've done something bad, I need to punish myself yeah. and 
and, and hurt, hurt myself or do something yeah. really extreme. Yeah. Well, I don't know if polarity is the correct word, but it's yeah. just like very extreme. And I think that's a real tough thing to wrap your head around is the food thing, right? Mm-hmm. And about trying to measure out the quantities that you measure and we track calories and the calories on the app, they're accurate, in, accurate in the sense of you're tracking numbers. Mm-hmm. But who in their right mind measures out exact quantities of things or, <laughs> I'm, yeah. you, I mean, you can try, but mm. still like, there's always variances. Yeah, of course. There's tolerances in foods. So mm-hmm. that's like, like there might be more f- fat on the particular state that you bought. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so your yeah. calories in that yeah, aren't gonna be exact, yeah. So it's, yeah, it is, isn't an exact science unless you had someone that was really with a fine tooth comb going over your food. Mm. And so early on when I originally did my cutting back in 2011, mm. 2012, I had that stress mm. about being so accurate. Whereas this time we have our tolerances. I measure my food on a set of scales, but I don't care if there's like one extra piece of yeah. thing or there's a couple of extra grams of rice because my body is also not exact. Mm. So some days I'll burn more calories than others. And you just need it's some just parameters. that consistency. Yeah, parameters mm. and consistency is where you need to be, I think. But, and that's, that's proven, right? Like since the start of the year, mm-hmm. like I'm getting results. Yeah. So I've taken that approach. I'm still getting results. Have you heard of the dip analogy? Uh, I maybe, it what is it? So, I think Seth Golden wrote a book and it's called The Dip and it's about how when you start something new or, or yeah, if you start something new, there's always a period where you know how a tick dips down and then it comes up like this? Yep. So there's always a period where you're in the dip where things are just fucking difficult and you're just not getting any traction but then if you make it through that dip point, you start to come into that upward trajectory where you kind of get into that, what's the word? unconscious competence sort of phase yeah so with these bodybuilding competitions and what we're doing here i know it's quite extreme but having that goal in place gets you through that dip and once so my my idea with bodybuilding competitions and and what we're doing here is well one I, i love what we create but for the client for you it's like i'm getting you through the dip but it's not just me motivating you there's an external factor yeah and not that we're going to stay this discipline this whatever forever but i'm teaching you how to get here yeah. so then later on if you just want to get back to 80 percent of this yeah you know how to do it but if you don't push through that dip you yeah. always sort of hang around here and go oh fuck it's a bit too hard you'll come back out. yeah 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 shit it's a bit too hard so you kind of have to push through that and then start to come back up so that's called you know the dip and it comes yeah. up <clears throat> so what I want to do is get my clients to this part here, yeah. and then we can, I'll let go of the reins a little bit, but then you know yeah. how to get there. Is there only three of these? Uh, four. Four, okay. Yeah. It reminds me of my high school maths teacher, is I had, I used to do like, I forget what they call it, but like advanced mathematics. It was like the extra electives, essentially. But he always used to teach us mathematical problems that would be on the final exam for the state. And he said, you train up here mm-hmm. and then it, your knowledge drops a little bit and then you study for the exam and you get back up to mm. 90% again. And he said, the exam question's down here. Yeah. So you, even when you drop and you haven't studied for a while, you're still above the exam question. Mm-hmm. And that's like, the dip analogy is really good as the, you're doing something you've never done before and you do hit, you go down before yeah. you go up. But then when you start performing, you're at this level, you are gonna dip when you don't do it because it's just human nature. But you're higher anyway. But you're higher anyway. Mm. And so to get out of that dip, you're not feeling this dip no, anymore. No, 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 no. You're feeling this dip, which mm. is, you're already 90% of the way there. You, you, you just have, need to get back. Yeah, because you have that, I don't know what theory it is where it's like unconscious incompetence and then yes. conscious incompetence yep. and then what so, is it? Uh, it's like um it's called johari's window mm-hmm. is one of the representations of it but essentially yeah it's like known unknowns unknown unknowns mm-hmm. known knowns mm-hmm. 
unknown knowns, mm. but it's those four things and yeah. they each represent something else. And so, and unknown known means that you don't know, but externally someone can see it. Mm -hmm. And that's where you need a coach. Mm -hmm. A known unknown is something that you know internally that others don't know. No known is everyone knows. Mm -hmm. Unknown and unknown is that learning phase. And you can either use a coach or yeah. something to help you because it may shift either into the known unknown or unknown yeah. known. Yeah, yeah. But essentially you want to get to, ideally, is like a known known state. Mm -hmm. um, for It's like personality or like mm -hmm. management traits. But yeah, similar to that. Yeah. Yeah, so wh where I was going that is, with that is once you get into that that unconscious competent state, yep. you know how to get there. It becomes second nature, but yep. it's just getting through that the shitty t first two periods that you have to get through. And I find that having an external date like this, and if somebody wants to get in shape, they push through it. Whereas if there wasn't something external that's saying a competition or a photo shoot, it's very difficult to get through that dip phase. Yeah, cause you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's Tree's philosophy anyway, whether it's right or wrong. It's probably more than likely wrong. Good. So I would say there's different mechanisms for that because it's harder to get through the dip Ooh. when it's further away as a tangible goal. Mm -hmm. So when we were like 80, 90 days out, mm -hmm. it is very hard to visualize the end to get through that dip. And that's where we went into the week of refeed. Mm -hmm. Whereas now I'm 23 days out, I had the one slip up. I don't need a week of refeed. I only need the mental reset because mm -hmm. it's also like I'm less than a month away so mentally you're like oh, fuck I, i've got to, i've got to do something well mentally it's easier to bargain with yourself because mm -hmm. and why is that it's a sh it's a shorter amount of time it's I forget what book it was but there's this book where they have to wind they have to wind something mm -hmm. 10 times um or do wind it constantly to get power they're like locked in a room fuck it's this girl and her family i think i'll figure it out later anyway mm -hmm. essentially the girl tells herself i can endure anything for 10 seconds mm -hmm. and so she counts to 10 each time she has to wind the wheel because her muscles are so sore they're like underfed everything mm -hmm. And so she always says, I can endure this for 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. And she gets to the end of 10 seconds, she's like, I can endure this for 10 seconds. And it's creating a time window yeah, yeah, yeah. in which she can endure. And so that's similar to training in that 90 days out is a long window. Yeah. But if I go, I'm doing this program and then my diet's gonna change, like I'm 90 days out, mm. but my diet's gonna change in 90 days. It's like you're playing mental games with mm. yourself. Saying, so, so that's exactly what I try and do. With, so, with um, that spreadsheet that I, yeah, we're going to work the on. Yeah, the one. Essentially, that's what I'm trying to achieve is to go, okay, so this is a block here. All we need to do is get through these four weeks. We get a deload and then we go again. So it's not yeah. like, fuck, am I doing this forever? So there's actually a plan. And then I don't know what it is. It's almost like, you know, when you present. We're both in it. Yeah, you know how when you present and you present visually, you draw, blah, blah, yeah. blah. The, the mind does something weird. So what I'm trying to achieve with that is to be able to go, look, this is the whole year. So yeah. then this is the end goal, but yeah. this is what it looks like. So then all of a sudden yeah. it's just not like, oh fuck, how am I gonna get there, blah, 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 blah. Now yeah. mentally they're going, oh cool. So the first phase we're gonna do that, they mentally lock in. So yeah. all I wanna get at that phase is that emotional buy-in. Like, fuck, I can do this, it's gonna work. Um, okay, so can you just do, just get a feel of it. Yeah. Um, hang on to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's 160. And it's also those opportunities to look back on where you've come from and you do reviews. Because you can get having the check-ins right and tracking your data mm -hmm. and going, well, you asked me yesterday like how heavy I was when I started. Mm -hmm. And then going, well, I've dropped over 10 kilos. And if we look at body fat percentage, that's dropped heaps mm -hmm. as well. So, 
So another book. I haven't read it, but I think it's called The Gap and the Gain. The what? The Gap and the Gain. Gap so and the Gain. We are always looking for the the gap. Uh, this either or the gap between where we are and where we want to be that's where we always focus but we never focus on that game where where how far we've come yeah and i guess that ties in the gap ties into have your long-term goal mm -hmm. and then the reason why you break that out into tasks and set goals mm -hmm. is you're reducing the gap yes correct you, well you, you would it, what's it what was i going to say um well, it's almost like that, that saying where they say, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Yeah. So you're just cutting everything into single bites. Yeah. So then that's, those little bites are, are little goals in themselves. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we were doing 12. 12. Uh, three sets of 12 for me, please. Okay. One. Two. I told my parents, go back to the conversation about my parents. Because I just told them they need to get a personal trainer. They do. <laughs> yeah, my mum's had one before and then she really liked him, but he moved to Sydney. Mm. Um, and she's the same as me. Like, I think a lot of people are like personal trainings. Anyone can train someone, but it's that personal level of connection because yeah. mm. it's such a personal service. Yeah, well, just since I've started my business and working it's realistically what I do if you really wanted to you could find the information on the internet yeah chat TPT can do it, you know? <laughs> yeah. it I think it's more pro tip for those at home <laughs> no don't do that <laughs> um, so uh, where was I going with that it's it's more for me, I find coaching and PT, it's when things go pear-shaped. Yeah. That's when you do your, like yesterday, yeah. or w when we had that conversation, it's yeah. just getting, it's about getting the client to their goal, Yeah. no matter what. You mm -hmm. know, like we just got to chop, we've got to change, we've got to pivot, we've got to do that. So yeah. my job is to just make sure you don't throw in the towel yeah. so that we get to the finish line. Yeah. And how we get there, I don't give a fuck if we crawl, yeah. we run, we go sideways, we just got to get there. Yeah, yeah definitely. <clears throat> And there's also a communication um, aspect to it. If you have all this technical knowledge, but you can't communicate it, you might as well not have that knowledge. Yeah, when I first started coaching, I was taught, the analogy was, don't use your outside voice inside. I was like, what the fuck does that mean? So what I was saying is, I can use all this technical jargon, blah, 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 from, because I always, it, where I've gone wrong is, I've always coached from my level, meaning, yeah. not that I'm better than it, but it's just like, I've done it for a long time, this is my jam, so yeah. my knowledge level is higher. So I've always coached from that level, but, yeah. The language that I'm, I'm most of all speaking Chinese because the person doesn't understand what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So is it just a dick measuring contest for me to say, hey, look, yeah. I'm so knowledgeable. Yes, in hindsight now, because when I'm starting out, all I wanted was just to get credibility. He knows what he's yeah. doing, but I wasn't able to relay yeah. the information to the client. Yeah. And the yeah. clients also have, like I, because I love fitness, like mm. I will always ask you questions mm. to get more information because I'm interested. Mm. But some people aren't like that. No, some people don't give a shit about. No. Like if we're doing this and I'm like, which muscle groups is this targeting specifically? Yeah. You'll get really excited and tell me. Yeah. Some people couldn't give a shit. They just want to get through the set. They just want to get the done and then yeah, go. And go, yeah. yeah.
11. Last one. 12. Beautiful. Right, one more, sir. Four set. That's three. That was three. All right, so we're... Watches Tree and Alex count to less than 10 <laughs> amounts of numbers incorrectly. It'd take us five goes to yeah. do Yeah. We just did one, two, four, three. Is this where we swap between the two? Yep. All right. You almost need two cameras. Yeah, I know. Well, I can't be fucked, so I'll see you guys later. I think we've covered enough topics yeah. for today. But Tree can say goodbye. Remember see you later, guys. I don't know where you are. He's over there. All right, catches. <laughs>